is with me uh, today. Great, so here we are. So we're back to Minecraft. So let's check out mobs. Let's see what we can do uh, with mobs to build in lessons. What are they? You know, lots of teachers message me and they say, oh, I've got this problem. There's this thing in my world and I don't know what it is. And I'm just, and I'm, when I go near it, it explodes. Da, 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 da. We know what that is. That's a creeper, right? And so I am going to head in here. I'm going to click play and we're going to choose a world. Now we're just going to choose, we had a world, uh, there we are, learning the basics. I'm going to rename that world later to our live stream. Yes, Lanny Watkins, good to have you in. So we've got Wales in the house, we have England, um, we have Ireland, we have uh, Austria, and we have Norway so far. And anyone else who's in that hasn't said hi. So this is our little learning world. Um, you can follow all of our, we're going to be doing this series twice a day, every day for at least a month while everybody's locked in their homes. I have nothing better to do. Actually, that's not true. I have loads to do. But this is a valuable use of time. Uh, and we're going to be doing it twice a day every day and they're all going immediately after they're finished they get uploaded to YouTube I then do some sort of admin around that and they're all going to be in a library so you can follow them up that is uh, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash immersive minds check that out um, and this is the world that we used the other day for our basics teaching people how to move how to fly uh, how to navigate the world, how to build. We checked out how to make a small building and so on. And so we're going to look at mobs in this same world and I'll switch in and out of the different worlds. Joe, you are not in school today. Joe Westermark um, in Wales says on YouTube, we are in school today looking at key worker children, of course. Uh, we've also got someone in from Lebanon. We've got someone in from Canada. Yay! And we've also got South Africa. Look at that. That's awesome. I love this global community. Um, one of the things we will be doing as the month moves on is bringing people into the live stream. So if you want to be a part of the live stream, you want to join me in one of the worlds, you've got something to offer. Maybe you've got a world that you want to showcase that you've done. We know that we're going to bring Stéphane Cloatre in from France and he's going to talk about his Fougère work. For example, we want to get Adam Clark and Dragnos on as game developers and map developers. Give me a shout. Um... PM me on Twitter or Facebook and uh, and we can arrange it. We're hoping to get Steve Isaacs in uh, and so on. So in this world, let's look around for mobs first. Let's have a look at uh, what mobs we can find. So down here, we found a sheep. Hey, little guy. Just going to get rid of that there. That is a sheep. And they all have different uses and they all do different things. Um, here we have found a pig. And he's off. He's having none of it. Um, what else can we find? There's another pig down there. Let's go on a mob spotting tour. I wonder what mob sheep. Oh, there, look, 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 look. There's a little baby sheep. Look at that wee guy. Hey, little guy. Yep, you too. Um, so we're going to find, uh, there's more sheep. Oh, there's a horse. It's nice to find a horse now and again. And you can, um, you can get on horses, but you're not in control of them unless you have a, see, I'm pressing the keys here and there's, I'm not in control of my horse unless I have a saddle. Um, but I'm going to press shift to get on with that. I got on the horse just by right clicking uh, on the horse. What else? Pegs. I'm hoping, I, I think by now we should have found a chicken. I don't want to go too far though in case I get lost and I don't get back to my little den. Because we're going to build in and around this den. There's another peg. Oh, there's a cow. So there we go. There's a cow. One thing you'll notice though is that we haven't spotted any monsters. Now, monsters are very specific and appear in a certain place. So let me explain what mobs is in terms of settings. So here's our little base. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build. Let me show you what a beacon looks like. I'm going to build a beacon by searching my inventory. So I press E and I search for a beacon. Now, a beacon basically creates a huge beam of light that goes up into the sky and you can see that beacon for miles, so this is a little extra. But in order for us to make it work, we need diamond blocks. So I'm just gonna put in D-A-I-A, and I'm gonna take some diamond blocks. And what I'm gonna do is up here on the hill, near my home, I am going to create two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna create a three by three diamond platform. And in the middle, I'm gonna place this. It stops working if you're missing any of those diamonds. You see that? And then I'm going to... Boom. Should work in a second. There we go. And that creates a beam that can be seen for miles and miles and miles. And if we turn around, he says, there we are. 
should be able to see that from closer than uh, from further away than that. Let me check my settings. What is going on there? Let's go into video settings. Yeah, particle renders a hundred. Look at that. I can't see that beam from very far. I wonder why that is. Anyway, here's another little trick that we might wanna you might wanna check out is if I put in glass, we can get some glass. Let's take a nice bright yellow and let's place it on top of the beacon. Whoops. Now to do that, if you right click on a beacon, you enter the beacon and there's things that beacons do that I don't really know enough about. So ignore me uh, with that. But if I hold shift, now let me just show you what shift does. If you hold shift, you sneak. So you see your little character going down there and then if you walk forward, you sneak around rather than walk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift so that I'm in sneak and then I'm going to place a yellow glass on top and in a few seconds that beam should go yellow. Uh, and what's really nice about that is if I make multiple blocks there and then make say an orange one and swap that out, it will go orange above. And so we can create these wonderful colours of beacons. Um, this is really handy for having, if you've got, if you're in a classroom and you have children that have builds in different places. Um, I know that James Prothero in Wales, for example, was doing the Imaginormous Challenge and he had big flat worlds and he had children building parts of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach and so on. And when we went into the world and I asked him for a demo of it, he's kind of like, I think this is this build and I think over here is that build. And my suggestion was make beacons, make beacons so that you know the yellow beacon is always Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the orange beacons are always James and the Giant Peach, the green is always the Twits and you can go and find all those different things using beacons. Um, so we're just going to leave that as a nice bright yellow so that whenever we get close enough to this area we can look around and say oh there's my beacon, I can see it and it kind of leads me to the house. There we go, that's working as we get further away and then it stops there. So we get a rough idea and we can see that super high in the sky. Now, back to mobs. And so let me show you, I'm going to quit out of this world for a second and I'm going to show you if we were starting a new world and we wanted to understand our control of mobs and how our mobs are going to affect our world, what does that look like? And so I'm going to go into either down here on the left hand side, hidden by my camera, is a create new. Um, actually from the main menu that would be play, create new, or if you go into view my worlds, you see a nice big button here called New World. And when we go into that, we click New, and you'll see there, I always name it, so we're just going to call this Mob Test. And then we're going to go down to Difficulty. The first thing we need to take into account is difficulty. Mobs are split into two separate types. You get monsters, like creepers, zombies, uh, skeletons, etc. Or you get animals but they're all considered mobs. So the, when we talk about mobs, we talk about them all. If we are on peaceful mode, we will not get monsters. It means the world is at peace and there are no bad guys. And so we are going to, uh, we're going to leave that on peaceful. If I wanted monsters, and in this case I do, I'm going to put that on either easy, normal or hard. And that just dictates how difficult those monsters are to beat. So we're going to put that on normal. And then we're going to make it a survival world. We're going to make it an infinite world. Um, this is just to test different mobs. And then when we get to the very, very bottom, ignore everything else, we can kind of leave that. We're going to go show classroom settings. And it's in here that you find a button called allow mobs. That is a toggle that will switch all mobs off. Nothing will spawn. But you have to be mindful that if you switch that off, you will never get chickens. You cannot get cows. You just you won't be able to get sheep. So you'll be able to get nothing. Now, this is handy if you don't want kids distracted by all that stuff. You're not using chickens. You don't have cows. You're not doing a unit on farming, for example. You're not doing mathematics with ratios. And so you need chickens and rabbits or whatever. And so you can switch that off. But it, it, it becomes problematic when you then think, but hang on, I only wanted to switch monsters off. So let's keep this in mind and let's recap. Allow mobs, which is at the very bottom of your world setup under show classroom settings. You'll see that I'm toggling that now. Allow mobs means switch mobs on. We then have to go back up and say our difficulty is either peaceful, because we do want mobs, we just don't want monsters, 
or we do want them all, but we want the monsters to be on normal. Okay, hope that's clear. You can revisit this as many times as you like in YouTube. And then once we're finished, and I'm sticking this in survival mode, which is really important to, to note, I'm gonna click play. We'll come back to our original world eventually, but this is just to show you what the, the mobs thing looks like. So we're looking around, it's the middle of the day. In fact, it's morning time. Good morning, the sun is rising. You see the sun is actually, if I just watch that for a second and put the, the crosshair here, you'll notice that the sun is going to catch up on the crosshair because we are now in a world that isn't always day. All of my creative worlds tend to be stuck on always daytime, but they're not in this case. And what's happening is the sun is rising and the moon will eventually come up. And that's really important because monsters as mobs come out at night. In fact, many of them burn during the day. And so you'll see here as I move around, uh, we can find pigs. There over there is a sheep. So we're getting all of the right mobs. What I need to do is hurry this up. So I'm going to do time set night. And when I turn it to night, we should, if we just move around the world a bit, it's where the game proves me wrong, but we should end up with monsters. There we are. So across there, you'll see the red eyes of spiders. There's one and there's one. And then there's a creeper. And we're going to have a little look and see what a creeper actually does. Um, for some reason, the television is not giving me sound. Can you hear sound in Minecraft? Uh, just get a sound check from, from my listeners. Can you hear it when I get rid of that? Maybe it's just my TV that's turned down. And so... What we end up with, oh, here he comes, here he comes. He wants a piece of me. Hey, little guy. Hey, little guy. Now, this is a creeper. I'm going to show you all of these. You can. Excellent. It's just my TV that's turned down. It's probably handy for me. Now, watch what happens when I go near this guy. This is a creeper. Keep this in mind. I'm going to go near him, and he's going to explode. Boom. And he's thrown me back. Look, I've only got one heart left, and he's created a huge hole in the ground. So creepers are not to be messed with. Okay. Actually, no bad mobs are to be messed with. Let's get back up the hill here. Spiders, there's one. There's a spinner. And what's that going to do? I'm just going to try and attack this now. So I'm going to attack the spider. And get rid of it. Now, over in the corner there, there we go. Now, if we attack that, I'm going to get some string. So you can see here we now have some string. But over there in the distance, you see all this pink fluffy stuff? Every time you look at it, it disappears. Oh, there's zombies with their blue trousers on in the back. I need to avoid this creeper or I'm dead. Um, but over here is zombies. Let's just go and have a look at what they look like. And so you can see now that we're in trouble. Our whole game is about surviving against these zombies. There we go. Zombies, creepers, all sorts. There was some pink stuff there, which was an enderman. They disappear when you look at them, but they steal stuff from you. And they're, they're quite creepy. Um, there he is. Look. Him with the big eyes. I'm going to look right at you. Oops. And he's gone. Oh, no, he's around. He's attacking me. Ah, I'm going to die. I'm being attacked. But I don't think I've ever been killed by an Enderman. Let's see what he does. No, don't attack me. Oh, there we go. You died. And so you can see the difference now between... You can see the difference now between the, the peaceful sheep that just wander around and then the bad monsters that will come for you. I'm going to click on respawn and we'll start back where we were. Luckily apart from some zombies over there. Actually, that's an interesting one. Let me go to game mode one and show you this particular zombie. This zombie here, if I'm in creative mode, they don't come after me. They will look at me and they are aware of me. Ooh, there's a zombie villager. This guy, this guy here is carrying a sword. Every so often, zombies will, uh, will appear with a sword or a shield or a piece of armor. And in fact, there's one with a piece of armor on, like he's got the helmet on. And it just makes them harder to kill because the assumption is that they were once humans. Uh, there is lots and lots and lots of different mobs, which I'm going to show you later. Um, we're going to, uh, so for example, I think I can um, forward slash summon a ghast, G-H-A-S-T. And if we summon a ghast, we end up with this big fella. And if I was in survival mode, he would be firing big fireballs at me just now. Um, there's also summon a wither. And we end up with this thing. Oh, what's going on? It's being born. Here it comes. Ooh. Wow. And then that thing just 
was born with an explosion and now it's just fire and skulls everywhere. Withers will destroy your entire world. Never, ever, ever let children summon a wither. Um, it's having a good go, eh? I like a wither. Look at that thing. Three heads. You can make them. The kids don't have to summon them. They can be made. Um, it's not liking that creeper. It's going after that creeper. Look. Anyway. So, oh, skeletons. That's another one that I didn't show you. So there's skeletons with bows and arrows. Now, you might be thinking, what's the point in showing me this? When I'm in a classroom and I'm doing stuff, uh, I don't necessarily need these monsters. But that's not true. It's really handy, first of all, to use them as they are. And secondly, later in the month, I'll be showing you how we can change these monsters to do what we want. So, for example, I'm building a pirate map at the moment. Um, and I want the pirates to the skeletons. We're building like a fantasy pirate cove. And we want the skeletons to look like pirates skeletons and they come after the, the people kind of like um the disney movies the, the cat pirates of the caribbean disney movies and so that's quite handy as well oh there's a troll oh there's just beating a troll so we, we just missed the troll which is a shame um it's gonna have a little go down here at ocelots oh that's a shame there's a little ocelot they're rare they're really rare i don't want i don't want the wither to get it i think the withers yeah the wither's gonna get it sorry ocelot yeah this is destruction here this is awful um, now what we can do to get rid of those, if you ever do this as an experiment and you think, oh, what have I done? We can just press forward slash and we just do kill space at E. Down in the bottom left hand corner, they're probably hidden by my, uh, my. let me just see what that looks like in, in OBS. Yeah, you're not really seeing that, but it's forward slash kill. In fact, you know what? Let me just move my graphics cam brand up let's just do that and move my webcam up a little there we are that's gonna help I think that's handy and my little we're official Minecraft partners by the way as a company we are officially part of their marketplace um, and so you can get our work on their marketplace. So it's getting too dark now, I think, for the stream. Um, but that's my next thing, is to show you what happens when it gets. So there we go. When I do that, you'll see that everything died. Puffs of smoke. He didn't. Oh, yes, he is. He's dying. Uh-oh. See you, fella. Boom. He died violently. Uh, but it also means that we've killed everything else. Let's do this. There's some zombies. Let's do kill at E and you'll see that the zombies have now fallen on the ground and died. So if you want to get rid of stuff, oh, then more are automatically spawning because it's night time. So what we could do is we could say, you know what? I'm done with monsters. I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go to difficulty peaceful. And from now on, there will be no more monsters. What there will, however, be if we want to is sheep. So we'll just get ourselves a sheep egg and I'm going to show you how to spawn these things manually in a second. Good. All right. So that was a little exploration of monsters. You can see now why I did this in a separate world, because we've ended up with explosions and holes in the ground and dead animals and all sorts. And it's difficult to, to play around with those things. Um, but we can use them for lessons. So let me just save and quit that world. And we'll talk about how to make mobs appear manually because you want them to. So let's take our little village here. We're going to build a little pen. Let's just imagine that we live, there's our beacon. We live in this little home. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself forward slash clear. See that down there? Forward slash clear and press enter. That clears your inventory. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in a fence. And I'm going to get myself a piece of fence. Mobs can escape up one block. So mobs, like you, mobs can jump up blocks. So a sheep could climb this quite easily. In fact, you see the llamas over there uh, jumping up and down. There we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this stuff here. And then we're going to pen that in. That means that they can't escape from the back because it's too high. And they also can't escape from the front because we've given them a fence. You see, I can't jump over the fence. I'm not allowed either. I'm going to fly over it instead. And then we can go in. And what I do is I type in the, uh, the word spawn. 
And when you type in the word spawn, you get all of the different eggs, because everything comes from an egg in Minecraft. We get all of the different eggs, so we can spawn chickens and cows and pigs and sheep and wolves. We can even get parrots, we can get donkeys and mules, we can get slimes, creepers, which we've already seen, witches, uh, phantoms, zombie villagers. Let's see what happens if we spawn a phantom in this world. We're not allowed. And the reason we're not allowed, and yet we can actually uh, spawn a cow if we want. This one's for you, Koo. This one is for you. There we go. Um, so we can spawn cows, but we can't spawn phantoms. Before I answer that, just have a think about why. Settings. Peaceful. We're not allowed phantoms because they're monsters and we're in peaceful. So for the purposes of this game, I'm going to go to easy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a phantom appear. Now, the problem is this little bird, which attacks you, if you don't sleep, is on fire and will eventually die. And the reason it's on fire is because it's the middle of the day and some monsters burn during the day. If I do time set night and then spawn a phantom, you'll see that it's perfectly fine. So be aware that some creatures that you might want for, uh, for lessons, for example, might need a particular environment. They might need a nighttime environment. I really like phantoms. Uh, I'm going to show you what we've done with phantoms later. We've actually turned phantoms into something else. Um, but for the moment, we're just going to stick to, let me go back into settings and show you, because we're not going to do, we're only going to do cows and sheep and things, and then time set day. And you'll notice down in the chat there, I'm doing forward slash time space set space day or time space set space night. And we are going to, uh, we're going to change the time of day. Hey, little piggy, we need to make a pen for you as well. But we've got cows, uh, certainly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them a little bit more grass. Remember, destroy, replace, destroy, replace. That's left click, right click, re left click, right click, left click, right click. I'll do the same left, right, left, right. And that gives them the nice grass. And you know what? I'm going to get some slabs. And I've already got some fence and I'm going to give them, let me just get rid of this. And I'm going to give them a little, oops, shelter. See, I look after you. Cool, I look after you. There we go. So that's my little cow shed at the side of my house. And you know what? They don't need this, but because I'm one for aesthetics, we're going to give them some hay. So I searched for hay in my inventory and we're going to give them a hay bale. There we go. I am quite happy with that. I feel like my cows have looked after. Look at that, straight on top of it, because they think, yes, there's a way out, but there isn't. Now, how do we get in there, you might be thinking. How do, if we're going to build pens, and you are going to build pens, I'm going to show you some lessons in a second that require that. Um, we're going to do a maths lesson, for example, in a second. What I want you to, to consider is this fences, they can't get out and you can't get in. And so... What we're going to do is we're going to search for a gate and then we're going to take this gate. I'm going to make it slightly different color. So I'm going to take the gate and then I'm just going to very quickly destroy the fence and then place the gate instead. And you'll see that the gate appears in the middle. And if I right click on that gate, just like a door, remember in our other video, we did doors. So right click, right click, right click, open and close. We can do the same here. We can do right click. Okay. So let's do a lesson. Let's imagine now that you know how to spawn. So you just press E. You type uh, underneath the, uh, the magnifying glass, you type spawn. And then you say, right, I want chickens this time. And I want a pig this time. So this time we are going to go, uh, let's do a math lesson. Let's do it up here on a nice flat area. So let's build a fence. So I'm going to build a fence that is this. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's get rid of that grass. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to do the same here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not including the corners. 
because uh, I want 10 blocks. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need one more. Uh, let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just fill the land up here. Nine, ten. So let's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's only eight. Look at that. Nine. 10 and I'm going to have to do another because I need it to be 10 by 10. So what I'm effectively doing there is that was just me thinking out loud because numbers escape me. That is now a 10 by 10 space, he says. I don't think it is. It's 11, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. <laughs> told you. I told you. I don't want to name any teachers that failed me in maths, but while Mr. Uh, Hamilton was fantastic, Mrs. Black was not. My capacity for basic mathematics eludes me. And here I am doing maths lessons. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick a gate in here. Let's stick it here. Oops. And that's our gateway. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chicken and I'm going to take a pig. And then I'm going to ask the question, if I open the gate, and the animals will make their way towards the gate eventually, because they do, what is the probability that the chicken will escape first? There's no difference in the code. Chickens don't do anything that pigs don't do in terms of wandering around. You can see them all wandering around there. They're off back to the corner, and so I'm going to open the gate. Now let's just watch. It's a nice probability exercise. We're going to do more probability later when we do dispensers and droppers. My money, if I was a betting man and I'm not, but my money is on the chicken. This could be a long stream. Oh, oh no. And the peg has left the pen first. So there we go. So. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of things in there that, that may, or may or may not be true to the mathematical um, equation we're trying to work out, but it's the thinking behind it. It's getting children to think about the 50-50 rule. But what if we added a pig and another chicken? What's the probability now? What if we were to pen the pig in to its own section first of, say, half and half? And so the, pen, the, chick, the, the pig would have to come through another section to get to that section and so on. What if the chicken was just spawned closer to there in the first place? There we go. Of course it was going to be the chicken. And so we have to think about that kind of stuff. And we can get the kids thinking about those sorts of things. What if we did ratios? What is the ratio of chickens to pigs in that pen? Oh, well, there it's changes now because that chicken got in. Now, the reason that chicken got in was because it came in from above not from the fence line. It was able to walk over just like me. But there we go. What's the ratio of chickens to pigs? And so we can think about that. Um, so just have a, have a little think about how mobs can be used in your lessons. Uh, that's just one of them really quick. Um, does anybody have any questions at this stage? You can ask questions at any time, but put them into the chat. I'm, all, I'm seeing chat from YouTube. I'm seeing chat from Facebook, uh, Twitch, mixer and uh, periscope as well so if you have any questions just ask them live because we're getting a lot of uh, comments which is nice so that's how we might use mobs the other thing we need to take into account is what what mobs do for us so let me just go and get a in fact we'll just put them in here let's in fact i'm just going to do spawn and we're going to get a cow. We're going to get a... We've already... Oh, no, we don't have a sheep. So the most common ones there are... Oh, there's a rabbit. Let's get a parrot. Let's get a horse. Uh, what else shall we do? That was a pig, cow, chicken, pig, sheep, wolf. We'll ignore the wolf just now. Uh, also a cat, which is nice, a mushroom, bats. Oh, bats are interesting. I don't even know if a bat, can a bat do? Yeah, there we go, bats. Whatever you do, don't eat it. Um, and so it's off. Look, the bat is making, the bat's like, I'm out of here. 
I have no time for your lessons, mate. I'm out of here. Okay, so what we can do is we can spawn, we've already got the chicken, we're gonna spawn a cow, we're gonna spawn a sheep, we're gonna spawn a rabbit, and we're gonna spawn a parrot. Parrots are nice, you get different colors as well. Let's do more than one parrot. Own a horse. That is a crazy farm. Now, I'm gonna go and get myself a sword. I, I apologize in advance for what is about to seem brutal, but they are digital sprites uh, and I would never, ever, ever do this in real life. But we have to see what they, they, they drop items. And these items are sometimes handy for some of the lessons. So if we're doing the Vikings, for example, and we know that we want the children to go out and they have to feed, they have to eat, they have to grow crops and they have to hunt meat. What is it that I want them to have around them that they can do that with? Did the Vikings have pigs? Did they have sheep? Did they eat horse? Uh, horse meat, you know, people around the world do. Did they? So, so what does that look like? And so we're going to kill the sheep first, I'm afraid. And what that drops, if I just do forward slash clear, is it drops some items. And when I pick those items up, you can see that it's actually white wool and raw mutton. So I got white wool and raw mutton. Now the rabbit's looking at me as if to say, please, please don't, please. But I'm sorry, little guy. <laughs> And that's dropped two things as well. These will disappear after a few minutes, but if I hover over them, we now have raw rabbit and rabbit hide. And we can use those things to craft. So what did the Vikings craft with? What did they make their leather armor out of, for example? Um, let's see what the chicken gives us. Oh, that chicken's just gonna give us a raw chicken. What about another chicken? There we go. That chicken's gonna give us two things this time. It's gonna give us raw chicken and a feather. Um, parrot is just going to give us a feather. Pig, I mean, he was tough. He took two swipes. He is going to give us raw pork chops, which we can cook, of course, and any raw meat can be cooked. And then let's kill the cow. Sorry, coo. And the coo is going to give us some leather and some raw beef. But we get leather, and it's with that leather that we can do stuff with. Um, I haven't killed a horse. I don't know if I can bring myself to kill the horse. I'm going to leave Parrot in there. Hey, little guy. And also... Oh, he's tough. He's going to give us leather as well. So they just give us more leather. And so, luckily there's not horse meat. And so, now I'm on a roll. <laughs> I just want more chicken. And so you can see that by giving our children these mobs in their, in their environments, in their, in their digital learning environments, they have uses. Some of them are edible. Some of them give you raw materials. So if we want, say we're doing the Reaver Wars of Scotland, uh, which is one of the lessons we've developed, and we will that we need one of the children to play the role of a Fletcher to make arrows. And those arrows have to be provided in order to... Um, hi, pious newt. Um, if we want to create arrows, well, they're going to need certain things for arrows. They're going to need wood for sticks, uh, and they're also going to need uh, feathers. So we have to find some way of getting them feathers. And back in the day, what they would have done was gone and hunted birds, taken their feathers and made arrows out of their feathers. So if we're doing a history lesson like that, maybe this is appropriate for us to be able to do that. So mobs give us those things. Um, what we've also got to take into account, I'm just going to clear my inventory again now, are what monsters can do for us too. And so one of the things I like to do is challenge my children to create a trap, for example, if we're thinking STEM engineering. There's no, in Minecraft, there's no greater, um, there's no greater min uh, uh, motivation to have children do something along the lines of STEM learning if it means killing a zombie, all right? So take, for example, if I want to build a tunnel, and I'm just going to do that here. I'm just going to take this material and build a tunnel. And then here, I am going to place some lava. Whoops, slava. I've done it again. Here we go. And then we're just going to place lava in there. And then I'm going to take a trapdoor. And we're going to put that over the lava. And then we are going to put a lever. 
and we're going to do redstone. Redstone is actually tomorrow. So if you're interested in doing much more with redstone, what is redstone? How is it working? We're just going to, I'm going to see if that works there. I didn't think it would. So it works. No, it works there. So if I push the lever, that opens and closes. Look at that. And then what we're going to do is, I am going to make a zombie. Let's get a zombie. Now I need to make this tunnel slightly higher because otherwise it'll escape. Because remember, they can come out of one block high uh, spaces. And then I'm very quickly going to pop the zombie. Oh, it's daytime, of course. But that's okay. We can get around that. Trials and tribulations of working with mobs, eh? I'm just going to do that. He's away anyway. Look, he's away. Even though he's on fire, he's looking for a river. Uh, in order to stop them going on fire, you just need to put something above their heads. That's it. So you just need to put something above their heads. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a zombie. As you can see, it's here. Then I'm very quickly going to get back because, hey, he's going to want to escape. Come get me. Come get me, bro. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. And when the time comes, I'm going to... Oh, it didn't work. I don't believe it. Let's do that again. <laughs> well, I would have been dead. Kids are so good at this. Kids are so much better at this than me. Right, let's see. I maybe need to do it earlier. Come on, come on, come on. Right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let's do this again. Maybe I need two trap doors. And sink. Yay! And we trap him and then he, down he goes. Now, this is uh, this is super, super, super basic. That was pathetic, in fact. But when we do redstone um, tomorrow, I'm going to show you a really cool one that involves pistons that push all the zombies into these sort of places. Um, but we did Egypt once where we, we did the whole of Egypt and we pretended that we had been buried in these big sarcophaguses underneath these huge pyramids that the kids had built using maths and so on. And then I said to the kids, right, now I'm going to be Howard Carter. I'm going to be some grand explorer in the 1920s and I'm going to discover your tomb and I'm going to try and raid it and I'm going to bring all of the treasures back to the British Museum. Not to make it political. Um, and I said, but I need you to stop me doing it. I need you to, I need you to think thousands of years in it, ahead and think, oh, someone's going to raid this one day, make a trap. And they engineered the most amazing traps using redstone and physics and and gates so that if I pressed a button a door opened but if I pulled the other button the door then collapsed and because it was an and gate it was just amazing uh, the stuff they did was just incredible um and so uh keep that in mind oh there's a thing I didn't show you wolves wolves are really nice wolves um can be used let's just go get one of those when I do coding I'm going to show you a really nice exercise with with wolves but if we pop in there there's a baby one and a main one but watch what happens when I place a rabbit beside the wolves this this whole stream is about animal cruelty I'm so sorry I would never do this in real life so he runs what's going on with these there they go look and their eyes go red and they're way after the rabbit and they got it sorry rabbit I'm really sorry <laughs> there you go. Oh, you better run. Run, rabbit, run. Oh, he got caught. Nice maths exercise. We could do timings. Um, here's another maths exercise for mobs. I like this one, actually. Let me show you. It's in a different world, actually. It's in a different world. Thanks, Barb. You take care. Um, let me go to my maths world. I'm going to show you a world that's dedicated just to maths. And one of the lessons that's in that is all around using mobs for, it's got to be in here. Where's my maths world? Look at all these worlds I've got. This is crazy. Then I'm going to show you We Are the Rangers and show you what we've done with mobs. And then I'm going to show you what we did in uh, Washington State history. Let me see. I'm all the way up at the top now. There it is. Okay, so here's our maths world dedicated just to teaching maths. 2D and 3D shapes, grid referencing, symmetry, and in this case, tessellation uh, over here. It's not tessellation we're going to actually, it's grid referencing. Now here's a nice exercise. We want to teach our children about grid referencing. 
And we can take them through the basics. We can say to them, look, this is how you create an X and Y, real simple. This is how we label the X and Y. So we can start with zero and do one, two, three, and A, B, C. Once we've, uh, there's another way of doing that where we do, we start with three, two, one, zero, minus one, two, three, and A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Here's how we create our first plot point. Whichever way we've decided to do that, here's how we create our first plot point. Here's how we make things. This is your school building. This is the local uh, shop. This is a police station. And we just create models. Here's the local river and features. Here's how we do more complex things. Ignore the animals um, because it's this one that I'm going to do the animals on over here. Let me just kill... Let's get rid of everything. There we go. So there's no more mobs. Then I'm going to do another command, and you might want to write this one down because this is another thing. Is you might want to do game rule do mob spawning. Game rule do mob spawning false. Now here's oops. I better spell that right. Here's what that means. It means set a game rule that mobs do not spawn randomly which means you're still allowed them, but only the ones you place. So you'll notice in the background there, we've already got two, two chickens and two pigs running around. I've just killed all the entities so that we can start again and we can make this work um, as, a, as a lesson. But already I've got two pigs running around randomly. So I'm gonna say, do mob spawning false, and then I'm gonna do kill at E, and I'm gonna get rid of those mobs. And what you'll notice is, now nothing spawns. I can still spawn them, but no animals spawn. So that's actually really handy. I use that a lot um, in, in my worlds. It's a preset in my worlds. So here's a model. And we know that that is, say, 20, it's 30 by 30. So we're going to have, you know, sorry, 26 by 26. So we're going to have the full length of the alphabet, A to Z. And then we're going to have down this side, we're going to have one to 20, or 0 to 26. And what I'm going to do is I am going to make a sheep spawn here. And we know that that is F9. Oops, that's, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to watch and plot, oh there we go, so it moved from F9 to G8. Then it's going to go on a walk again. Where does it stop next? And you can have this labelled more clearly than mine. Oh, so that stopped at D six hypothetically we just you, you can make the grid up yourself i'm just making this up as we we look down on it where's the sheep going to go next and what we can do is we can have the children plot all of the points that the animal stopped at and all we're doing is we're it's your know, key stage two level three mathematics grid referencing how do we get our children to understand grid referencing there we go so it's come back this time uh, what would that be that would still be uh, d6 for example yeah d7 and it's off. And so that's another nice mathematics lesson, just using mobs uh, to look at that. So now let's look at what we've done in the way of changing these mobs. We're going to, later on in the month, we're going to be talking about creating your own mobs, making them look slightly differently, um, and so on. Let me show you what this looks like, um, so we can at least show you what we mean by that. Where are we? Let's take this one first. Washington, Washington State History. Uh, the entire lesson is on the back of a giant black bear, which we'll see when we get around the side here. Here he is. Hey, big fella. But what we've done is we've created a series of animals. So if I go into spawn animals, you'll see we've got chicken and cow and pig and sheep and wolf, but we've got a black bear. That's not normal. We have a beaver. That's not normal. We have a prairie dog. A deer. This is handy. Cod, puffer fish, salmon, sea. Oh, there's a seal. We've got sea turtles. Oh, buffalo. Nice. We've got two seals for some reason. Let's do buffalo. Buffalo, incidentally, were creepers. 
So we've taken creepers out. Oh, there's a rat. Yes, we love rats. I forgot we'd done rats. Uh, slimes, spiders, US villagers. <laughs> let's look at a US villager and let's look at a native villager. This was for teaching Washington State history. Um, and I think that's it, right? Is that all we did? Oh, no, no, I know what else we did. We did an eagle. So let's actually just do an eagle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go, there's an eagle there flying in the sky. So I'm just going to let them, I'm just going to go down here with them. And I'm going to say, well, what does the black bear look like? And you'll see that we actually have a black bear. He's sweet, right? Hey, little guy. And he's just a sheep, I think. I think he started off, oh no, he was a polar bear. He started off as a polar bear. And then we have a beaver. How awesome is he? Hey. Barb's just left us from Canada and we've got their national animal. Or is that the moose? Come back, Barb. Um, then we've got prairie dogs. Check these wee guys out. Look at that. Boing, boing, boing. So they just jump around. They're for a, oh, but you see the eagle came down and got them. We've coded the eagle to attack the prairie dogs as a source of food. Here he comes. Oh, I wonder if he'll go down again and get one. Here he comes. Yep, he's definitely tempted. Oh, he's way back up again. Um, let's get a deer. And you get different types of... Oh, there's a baby one. You get different types of deer. Lots of white ones. There we are. So we've created the deer and we did this ourselves. All of this can be done and we're going to do a whole lesson on block bench and creating creatures. What else have we got? A seal. I should probably get some water here for the seal. Because otherwise it dies. Because it needs to be in water. So we've already seen the black bear, so I'll just... Uh, just going to fill that out. We're doing water lava mechanics tomorrow as well. Um, so look out for that. There we go. Now I'm going to take the seal and put it in there. If we put it on land, it just kind of flounders around, <laughs> flounders around a bit and dies. And that's, uh, that's a shame. So we'll just sort of nudge him into the water. There we go, fella. So we've got seals in the water. How cool is he? And then we have buffalo. So let's look at the buffalo or the bison. We can have herds of them. Um, and then we made rats. Nobody likes the rats. Look at those wee things. Horrors of them. Hey, little guy. They've even got little nosies. <laughs> um, and I think, oh, he's dying. Yeah, because he wasn't quite in the water. And he leaves a fish. <laughs> he leaves a raw fish. But there we are. And then we've also got a US villager. This is for the um, part of their Washington State history. And then we have the eagle, which I told you about earlier. So we have the... Uh, the eagle as well. So when you think about mobs, when you're thinking about designing your lessons, think about what mobs do I need? I might not need sheep or I might I might need a brown bear because I'm doing Washington State history or, you know, I might be doing, let's take you to um, We Are the Rangers. Let me show you what We Are the Rangers looks like. Um, this is where we, of course, did uh, a, a, an entire African set. Uh, where are we? The Rangers is in here somewhere. So many worlds, it's scary. Um, I'll just do map three. Um, there's five We Are The Rangers maps uh, with Pangolin and all sorts in them. So there we go. So what now we're able to look at this sort of Botswana-esque style world in a big uh, Petri dish, if you like. And then you'll see there that we have elephants. So we created elephants and we also created uh, giraffes. We created bees. You'll see the bees flying around, little tiny ones. We did that like three years before uh, Minecraft, uh, Microsoft did. Um, what else have we got over here? Zebra. We have zebra. We have warthogs. Spiders. There's a warthog. Hey, little guy. Who are you running away from? There we go. Um, and they all make noises. There's a lion. Look how derpy this lion looks. Yeah, you're not going to be worried about him. He's not coming after you. Um, it's a sunflower. Buffalo. Hey, fella. Um, we've also got some guinea fowl. 
Oops, they leave a pencil incidentally when they're dropped. <laughs> I'm not sure why. We also have pangolin and we also have spiders. Let me see what happens with spiders. You'll love this. Um, if we get spiders, I've already got them in my inventory. If I go down to the floor somewhere, let's go over here. They're tiny. We made actual African sized spiders. I say they're tiny, they're huge, but that's what they're like in Africa. And they're fast. Look at them. Oh, hey, little guy. Um, we also made snakes. I can't remember what snakes are. And the reason I can't remember is because if we put in spawn, we basically used other things. So I don't know what we turned a snake in, what a snake was. I'm not sure. Let's try. Let's try a parrot. The bats were bees. I know that much. You can rename them now. We didn't back then because this was a couple of years ago. It was like three years ago. Um, take it easy, Paul. Thanks for coming in. Uh, what was the polar bear? I think the polar bear was a rhino. Spiders we know. Slimes, strays, wither skeletons, skeletons. I'm not making any of them happen just in case. Uh, but here's what else we can do. Let me show you beehives. Um, this is one of our builders, amazing builder, um, Dragnos, who does incredible stuff. Oh, parrots are parrots. Polar bears are, are weird. <laughs> Derpy rhinos. Look at that with his tiny little head. Um, what's over there? Something in there. Something. Oh, the spiders have all gone in the water. Look. The Americans think it's funny that I say spider and not spider. Spider. Um... I'm trying to find a snake for you. Somewhere around here, there are snakes, but they're so elusive, they're hard to find. Oh, there's a pride of lions. Look at that. Um, oh, we also have, check this out. Bet you've never seen anything like this before. We also have, oh, there they are, crocodiles. And they come up and get you. If I was in survival mode right now, I'd be getting eaten by crocs. So we've got crocodiles too. And so what we are, um, there we go. Now let me see, what, what was it I was wondering about? Oh yeah, bats were bees. Hey little guy. Oh yeah, so it was the, sh the beehives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a beehive down and you'll notice that it looks, it opens because it's a shulker box which has that behavior, but there's nothing in it. I say there's nothing in it, there's nothing to, for it to get annoyed about. So if I put a sheep down, suddenly a bee appears. Now a sheep is an elephant, technically. And the reason we did this is because this is very real. Elephants are trampling, this is all to do with the, uh, so think about this lesson. If you're a your teacher tuning in or a parent tuning in and you're thinking, what's this got to do with teaching? Down in Botswana uh, and other parts of Africa, there's a very real elephant-human conflict. And elephants are trampling farms, crops and people and as a result, they get killed. The, the, the people go and hunt them to stop them coming through. It's a very difficult thing. To, it's, edu it's all about education and it's conservation and it's very, very difficult thing that's going on. And they're killing the elephants. And so what they've discovered is that elephants hate bees because they get stung. They're just like us. You know, they've got that kind of like stingable skin. And so the farmers of Botswana are importing bees and they're having bees on their farms and they deter elephants. And you'll see there that the elephant will not come over this bridge. It stays there because it knows that there's bees there and it's off, it's away in the other direction. And so this is a model in Minecraft of a very real situation that's happening in Botswana, a conservation suggestion. Um, and when we do our problem-based, there's a wee swimming spider. When we do our problem-based learning, lessons across the world this is one of the things we do we say to children you tell me what the problem is tell me what the problem is and we'll work out a solution we'll model in minecraft a solution and you know what that solution might actually be viable that solution might be something we can do like in botswana somebody somewhere suggested why don't we try bees elephants hate bees and of course it's creating a new economy because the people are then making honey and they're selling the honey which is then enriching the, the, the villages and they're creating this nice uh, economy from it that poor elephant is now stuck on that bridge. Worse so, because <laughs> I'm that kind of guy, I'm going to put one on the other side. 
and leave him there. So, <laughs> here's a nice giraffe. I don't know what's going on with this giraffe. We'll check him out. He was, he was born different. Um, there we go. It's a shame I can't find snakes, and I don't know what snakes were, so I can't make them appear. But anyway, I'm like a hawk looking for a snake to eat. Or I could be a honey badger looking for a snake to eat. Anyway, so really there's only one thing that I want to show you that's left. I mean, there's always more to teach you about mobs. Mobs, mobs, mobs. Lessons, lessons, lessons. It's, you know, there's so much we can do. But the only other thing I want to um, teach you, and I'm going to go back to my original world for this one. My... Uh, lesson world for this one which is learning the basics is the following there are mob spawners so say you knew that you didn't want mobs to appear those wolves are still chasing those rabbits those things so say you wanted mobs just to appear every so often and so what we can do is if we just put in the word spawn we can get what's called a monster spawner. It's badly named. It should say mob spawner, but it's monster spawner. Um, but trust me, it's the right thing. And then what we can do is we can just put it down there. It actually looks like that when it's above. And what we can do is we can take any of our spawn eggs, like a wolf, and we can put it in and you'll see the wolf is now spinning and it will spawn wolves. There's two. We'll put more in there and we'll cover it over. And what we'll end up with is, randomly, a set number of, uh, within a set range of ticks, which remember in our last video we talked about time as ticks, Minecraft ticks, tick, 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 tick. When it gets to 500 ticks, boom, more wolves, um, or whatever. And so you can do that. And so this is what we do with things like in our math apocalypse. Let me show you what that looks like before. There we go. So there's more wolves. Wow. And we're getting lots because we've got two mob spawners within a certain space of each other. But if I go to uh, our math apocalypse world, where the children have to survive a zombie apocalypse. Now I'm going to have to find it. There we are, breaking math apocalypse. What we've done is we have placed, you'll see all these zombies appearing here. I want the kids to encounter zombies along the way. So as they follow the village and they get to the power station and they have to head into the city which is held in the, the palm of a giant zombie's hand, um, I want them to get trapped. You'll see there's zombies down here in the water and that's because somewhere around here there's a hidden cache of zombies. There's more, look. And, and so all I've done is I've just hidden monster spawners with zombies in them. So if we just go down here, whoops, uh, WB. Let's get ourselves a spawn. Let's get ourselves some zombies. Then we're just going to do this. We're going to put a zombie in there and then we're going to cover it over. And every so often we'll get zombies appearing on this particular part of the path. And it means that as children to and from, and the, it's like this zombie apocalypse just keeps getting, the city's full of them. So when you go in the city, there's spawners everywhere. Um, and what we're really trying to do is teach the children math so they have a set number of time to, I'm not sure why they're not appearing, I would need to check that, but I'm going to get rid of it anyway because it doesn't belong in this world. Uh, but that's what we would do, that's what's, that's how these zombies over here are appearing and how these ones over here are appearing and so on. And they're just going to keep coming for us. There's lots. Um, but if we head into here, we have, and I'm going to do a whole stream on this, so don't worry, there's a whole stream on how we have to solve these number puzzles in order to get electricity up and running to find a solution to the zombie apocalypse virus and so on and so on. Um, so I'm going to stop the stream there. That was an introduction to mobs, what they are, what they do, how to differentiate, when to set them up, how to set them up and some of the things that you can use them for in lessons. Um, if anybody has any questions, message me on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, please check out uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Immersive Minds. If you're watching on uh, Mixer or Twitch, give us a follow because we're doing this twice a day, every day for a month. And at 6 p.m. UK time today, we're going to be doing biomes. We're going to be exploring what are biomes? Why are they important? When you're developing your lessons in your classroom, why is it important to have the forest biome you need and not the ocean biome you didn't need? Uh, what does it mean to be in an ocean biome for the weather or for the creatures or, you know, the mobs and so on? So we're going to be exploring fully what biomes mean 
in uh, just five hours. So I'll see you again in five hours time. Thanks everyone. Stay indoors, stay safe, look after yourself and your loved ones. Bye everyone.